of 5G. Tamir, however, says a three-month study trial had commenced on November 25, 2019 to critically review and study the health and security implications of deploying 5G in the country. It therefore adds that the Nigerian Communications Commission, NCC, was directed to ensure that a team of experts, security agencies and other stakeholders fully participate in the trial. The minister said the trial process has been concluded while the study and reporting process is currently ongoing. Under 5G, as it relates to the coronavirus, the minister declared that governments would not act on the speculations, only rather will take an informed decision on 5G after due consultation with experts and the public. Meanwhile, the Minister of Finance, Budgets and National Planning, Zainab Hamad, on Saturday met with leadership of National Assembly to intimate it with an executive approval to establish a $5 billion Naira COVID-19 intervention fund. A statement by the Special Advisor to the President of the Senate on Media, Ola Awuni says the finance minister with senior officials from her ministry held the meeting with the president of the Senate, Hamad Lawan, Speaker of the House of Representatives, Femi Bajabia Mila, and other principal officers of the National Assembly. The meeting was a follow-up to the one held last week Wednesday between the National Assembly leadership and members of the Presidential Committee, which was set up for the management of the COVID-19 crisis. The House of Representatives is to consider another. The House of Representatives is to consider another economic stimulus bill that will ensure that Nigerians get free supply of electricity for two months to mitigate the effect of COVID-19 on the economy. This came to lie during a meeting between leadership of the National Assembly. The Minister of Finance and Director General of the Budget Office, the Speaker Femi Bajabia Mila said the proposed bill will be considered immediately the House reconvenes from the ongoing break which was declared due to the pandemic. Bajabia Mila says electricity is a commodity consumed by every household and is using it to boost the informal sector under which most Nigerians operate is essential in the aftermath of the coronavirus pandemic. He urged the executive to consider all options put forward by experts on preparation against economic effects of coronavirus. The Minister of Finance, Zainab Hamad, said a 500 billion naira intervention fund is among measures initiated by government. The speaker stressed the need to ensure that all government funds and private donations are transparently accounted for. The United Nations Secretary General Antonio Guterres has described as remarkable Nigeria's response to the COVID-19 pandemic. Speaking during a virtual news briefing in New York on Friday, Mr. Guterres singled out Nigeria as one of a few developing countries that has shown a remarkable capacity to respond. The UN Secretary General says he was quite impressed to see Nigeria quickly put in place a medium and hospital adding that he saw difficulties in countries that are much more developed to do the same quickly. Efforts done by countries in the developing world that uh, we should uh, uh, point because they represent a very strong determination, but the resources uh, available are, uh, of course, insufficient and uh, the health uh, services are usually uh, extremely uh, out of proportion with the needs of a pandemic like this. So massive support to the developing world is absolutely necessary. The UN chief stressed that to act is absolutely essential in containing and suppressing the disease to avoid dramatic economic and social consequences being witnessed in so many parts of the world. He, however, appealed to countries with effective testing, contact tracing and quarantine mechanisms in place to do much less 
restrictions of movements and of, of separation of people. Now, as a coronavirus death passes 60,000 globally, China, where the pandemic started, declares a national mourning for those who died in a fight against the disease. Joyce Ometu has a global update on COVID-19. The World Health Organization warns that rushing to lift restrictions could prolong the global pandemic. A data compiled by Johns Hopkins University as at 6 p.m. local time showed that the number of countries affected now stands at 205. The number of confirmed infections globally has now reached 1,154,925. The death toll is 61,714 and recovered cases at 240,330. The latest figures from the United States shows more than 1,100 deaths in a single day, the highest figure for a 24-hour period anywhere in the world. This brings the total number of deaths to 7,844. New York State remains the worst affected, with fatalities climbing to 113,704. The U.S. has so far confirmed 290,920 cases of COVID-19. And in the United Kingdom, the number of deaths from the virus rose by 708 to a total of 4,313. The worst daily death toll there since the outbreak began. The confirmed cases there are now 41,903. Meanwhile, Spain has reported 809 more deaths in the past 24 hours, bringing the total to 11,744. So far, 124,736 have been infected, which is now more than that of Italy. The number of daily deaths there has fallen below 900 for the first time in three days. The country's prime minister has extended lockdown measures until April 25, saying the restrictions were saving lives. Let's go to France, where the number of deaths continue to rise, with 600 new deaths recorded in the past 24 hours, bringing the total to 6,507. The country now has 82,165 confirmed cases, and Iran, the country worst affected by the pandemic in the Middle East, has seen its death toll rise to 3,452, with more than 158 more fatalities recorded over the past 24 hours. Confirmed cases there now stand at 55,743. China, where the pandemic began, has mourned the victims of the coronavirus outbreak by observing a three-minute silence, bringing the nation to a halt. A day of remembrance was declared in the country on Saturday to honor those who died of COVID-19. A total of 81,639 confirmed cases of COVID-19 have been reported in China, and 3,336 people have died of the virus. In the meantime, Kuwait on Saturday recorded its first coronavirus death out of 479 confirmed cases. A total of 62 new infections were confirmed over the past 24 hours. Reports said 17 people are in intensive care units while 93 have recovered. In Africa, the continent has not been hit as hard as other countries, but there are fears that if and when COVID-19 takes a hold, it may be a catastrophe. As at Saturday, 6 p.m. local time, the African Center for Disease Control reported 7,741 cases of the virus, 313 deaths and 640 recoveries across the continent. In other news, U.S. Center for Disease Control updated its guidelines to recommend that all residents take precaution and wear face masks. Meanwhile, as the weather heats up in Europe, the police forces are ramping up efforts to keep people at home to help fight the spread of the virus. In Africa, Senegal is working with a British company to develop a quick, simple and $1 test. It is not all bad news as a couple in India have named their newborn twins Corona and COVID. 
This is coming amid the country's nationwide lockdown. The couple said the names would remind them about the hardship they faced during the lockdown and before the successful delivery. And that's a global update on COVID-19. Thanks for staying. I am Joyce Omitu. Thanks a lot, uh, Joyce Omitu, for the updates. Now, let's uh, join our correspondent uh, on Engie Fine Face, who is uh, standing by on the Lagos Street in Abuja to give us updates on compliance within the FCT. On Engie, uh, tell us what uh, you've been able to find around. Well, Musbao, thanks for joining me from Lagos Street in Gariki 2. Now they say this street, Lagos Street, never sleeps. And although there is a lockdown order in the FCT, the street is still very busy. We've been here for a couple of minutes now. We've seen people moving around. We tried to talk to some of them to understand why they are out rather than staying indoors in compliance with the stay-at-home order. Even as I'm talking, you see vehicles still plying the routes, moving out and in uh, to the streets. Some of the shops by the streets are open. Uh, there is someone selling uh, bread, what would they call popularly uh, meshai. Uh, shops, people very busy. We, we are seeing people jogging earlier. There seems to be a low-key activity, but it's not like the place is quiet as one would have expected at a time when there is a stay-at-home order in the FCT. Uh, thanks a lot, Tonenge. Fine face. Uh, what about security arrangement? Can you find uh, security men um, um, implementing this uh, restriction of movement order? Well, Musbao, I saw uh, I saw a van now just drive past, but coming in up to this point from NTA, we didn't see any roadblock. We were expecting that at some point we'll be intercepted by operatives of security agencies to ask us what we are doing, but we didn't see any. Just while you're asking your question, a, a one in Lord's van just drove past, but I think that's the much we've seen so far. Within the street, there is no roadblock. We've not seen any personnel around to implement or enforce the stay-at-home order. So literally, the place is open for people to move around, and they indeed are moving around. Thanks a lot, Nengie Fine Face. Stay safe and return to the station as soon as possible. This is the news on NT International. We're taking a break. More news afterwards. Thanks a lot for staying tuned in to the news on NT International. Police water cannon trucks have been deployed to support the federal government's COVID-19 decontamination exercise. On NGA Fine Face earlier report that the trucks will focus on disinfecting roads and other open spaces in the federal capital territory. Now, it all began with the official flag up of the decontamination exercise in Nigeria with a partnership between the Federal Ministry of Environment and that of the Federal Fire Service. That partnership is now extended to the Ministry of Police Affairs where some trucks that were either to use as riot vehicles to disperse crowd are now incorporated into the decontamination exercise will decontaminate the whole of uh, FCT by the grace of God. And again, we are very uh, are concerned with uh, high-risk areas like market motor parks, which will all be done in the next two, three days. Inspector Mohamed Suleiman had been a driver of one of these trucks for a long time. He feels excited to be a part of history where he is among the few Nigerians that will be going on the field to limit the spread of COVID-19 through this decontamination exercise. 
Today, I'm one of the part of the exercise. It is glory to be Almighty God. I'm in good health. Likewise, my family are in good health. Then we pray for all Nigerians and all the everybody in the country to be in good health. The fighter trucks have shown the capacity to participate in the decontamination exercise. It's now time for action as they drive out into the streets of Abuja. On Nengie, Fine Face, NT News. All right, thanks a lot, uh, On Nengie, Fine Face. Now joining me in the studio is uh, Dr. Yakubo Baba, Director of Education and Training environmental health officers regulation council of nigeria um, uh, to share more lights on the ongoing decontamination exercise of the government now glad to have you doctor uh, tell us about this uh, decontamination and what does it how does it help in this fight against covid 19. Uh, thank you very much uh, nice uh, having me uh, the decontamination and the disinfection is one of the environmental health measures put in place to contain the spread of the COVID-19. Um, the decontamination, like what you have uh, really uh, seen, the Honorable Minister of Environment flagging it up uh, from Monday with the Federal Fire Service, then he scaled it up by uh, getting another partnership with the uh, Federal, uh, Federal Ministry of Police Appears to be precise, the Nigerian Police Force, uh, which deployed another 10 vehicles uh, day before yesterday, and the minister did the flagging up of the streets decontamination, which we call it street decontamination and also residential contamination. Um, so far, so good. We are making a steady progress because um, the decontamination uh, mapping strategy, uh, we are focusing on mostly the corridor routes of uh, the infection, uh, where we make emphasis more especially um, to the public institutions uh, that is owned by the federal government. Uh, and I can say categorically uh, uh, b by the evening of today, we are able to cover about uh, 25 uh, institutions. And by the projection of our marking, we are anticipating in next few days to get a mileage of covering about uh, 74 MDS and ministries of government that we have marked for the first pairs of the uh, the exercise. Also, exercise in the FCT. Now, tell us uh, when is that uh, going to start in other states of the federation? Well, uh, before we uh, uh, really uh, I answer, when are we going to start in the other state of the federation? Like what the minister has said. What we are focusing now is on the corridor of route of infection. And you know, if you notice, uh, based on the report by the National Center of Disease Control, the high-risk states are Lagos and Abuja. And if you uh, look at what is happening in uh, Lagos and Abuja, our men are really busy. Uh, decontaminating and disinfecting. Not only decontamination and disinfection, also we are also visible everywhere uh, really educating uh, uh, and promoting what is uh, the best practice, hygiene practice in the communities. So uh, what we are doing now um, is going to be a national program but we are now focusing on the really uh, high risk and corridor of roots of the pathogens. All right, Doctor, thanks a lot for your uh, perspective so far. Now tell us about the composition of a chemical being used. How safe is it for the environment and humans? Are there any side effects? Thank you very much. The chemical we are using um, is uh, United Nations approved and also WHO recommended 
for the disinfection and also the contamination. The chemical has uh, virtually less effect on humans, less effect on animals, less effect on plants, and also less effect on the environment itself. And what we are also encouraging, like what the Honorable Minister keep on saying, people should stay away when they have seen our men decontaminating and also de disinfecting. Because no matter how safe chemical is, it has that cumulative effect on human when you take it in excess. Because the, any chemical that you see, no matter how we say is less effect less uh, it has less effect on the environment and humans when you have taken it in larger dose it may cause some reaction within your body or internally if you have inhaled large, uh, la larger dosage of such chemicals it can also cause some uh, co discomfort and also may cause some uh, respiratory uh, diseases which are also factors that we think are not um, favorable and also a predisposing factor for you to also get this corona disease. Okay, thank you very much. But quickly, tell us what collaboration and support is your council getting on this assignment? Very quickly. Well, uh, the council, you know, is under the supervision of Federal Ministry of Environment and the, the contamination is uh, really uh, uh, taking or is the responsibility of the Federal Ministry of Environment. So as a ministry, uh, we know we cannot do it alone. You know, issue of the contamination require intensive and also huge resources and deployment of uh, uh, high capacity equipment and facilities. And that's why first we, uh, let me use this opportunity to uh, appreciate and thank the controller general of uh, federal fire service who has agreed to partner with the federal ministry of environment to deploy all his uh, uh, resources and also uh, facility uh, equipment at his disposal so that we can utilize such uh, 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 equipment for for effective and also uh, uh, to, to achieve a speedy decontamination of Abuja and he is also ready to deploy the same uh, uh, equipment for us to utilize if the need arise at the national level. Let me also use this opportunity to also thank the Inspector General of Police who also um, deployed uh, about 10 trucks and also he is also ready to give us more trucks in Faraventure we want to scale up the, the contamination and the disinfection. Let me Dr. Yakubo uh, Baba emphasis. Director, thank yeah. you so much for your perspective so far. We really appreciate you and we hope your officers and men will continue to stay safe as they ensure a safe environment. Thank you very much. Dr. Yakubu Baba is a Director, Education and Training, Environmental Health Officers Regulation Council of Nigeria. Now let's take you to the world of sports to get some stories.